everyone and welcome. Thank you very much for joining us here today on this podcast show with myself, Sonia Clark, with Prosper, with myself. <laughs> and today joining us is Sarisha Ravuri. Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining us, Sarisha. Hi, Sonia. Thank you so much for having me here. It's lovely I to be uh, it's a lovely to have you here and such an honor. So listeners, let me just tell you a little bit about her. So she's a licensed practitioner of NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming and accredited in Belbin team roles, which I'll ask you a little bit about later. I know about it. It's one of my favorite um, models, I could should say. So I think that we need to talk a little bit about that as well. And Sarisha is also a speaker, or was a speaker just recently, at the Best You Expo, where is, which is where I actually met you, isn't it? And uh, we'll be continuing to speak in those, um, the further shows that they'll be holding. And Sarisha was also the youngest participant to have attended the International Leadership Grid. So maybe listeners, you might be getting a little bit of a flow happening here. She's all about leadership in particular. So she's the founder and CEO of Citrons. She's passionate to help people, teams and organizations with state-of-the-art change tools like NLP. So Sarisha, perhaps maybe you want to tell the listeners a little bit about your story. Right. So yes, like you said, leadership is one of my passions. I absolutely love it. Um, a little bit about leadership. I think my first um, journey of leadership started when I was six years old and I watched the movie, The Lion King. Oh, yes. And that's where I got all my basic concepts of leadership. I mean, I was six years old, a very impressionable time. And through that movie, it was like, Leadership is one of the most important qualities of life, and that's what got improved. And uh, my journey started literally from there. Um, and I have been seeing my dad. He's been in marketing, sales, he's been in organization development, business consulting all my life growing up. And that's what I grew up with. So, all the concepts of leadership, all the concepts of teams, of business, of growth, all the values that I have, the contribution. It's been something that's a work in progress right from the age of six right up till now, which is also why I got the opportunity to attend a great program like Leadership Grid. I was 19, I was a college student, and everyone else in that public program were either CEOs or business owners or CFOs, and they were all at least double my age. And um, I didn't feel the slightest bit out of place. I enjoyed myself. It's a very intensive training. And I totally enjoyed myself because I was in love with the concepts. Mm -hmm. And from there, I also heard about neuro-linguistic programming around that age. But my dad said that I couldn't go for it at that age because he said it's too much power in the hands of a little girl. <laughs> I want you to grow up a bit and then go learn from the best. And which is why I went and learned neurolinguistic programming from Dr. Richard Bandler, the co-creator of NLP um, in the UK. And that's where I met uh, Bernardo and that's how the best you happen. And I met you and yeah, so it's like a full circle there. Yeah. And, yeah. So I've always been passionate about leadership. I've always been passionate about helping people helping them grow. That's what my company name is all about as well. Citrines, it's the gemstone. It's used as a stone for success, a stone for abundance. So just like that stone helps people without actually doing anything uh, other than being there with them, I would love to be a catalyst for success in people, in businesses, and that's basically what um, I am about. And that's what the dreams is about. Oh, lovely, lovely. Gosh, it, it, you're really singing from quite a few pages in my hymnal there. I, I love leadership. And I, I think that it's so important for us to be helping other people with leadership and moving forward into the future. And like you said, to be the catalyst of the, the ways that leadership does continue to evolve. I mean, there's some fantastic tools out there that 
uh, are fabulous, even if they've been around for a little while, they're tried and tested, but it's also how you use them in today's day and age and moving forward. So you've talked a little bit about uh, neuro-linguistic programming and, and that is a tool. Do you want to explain that a little bit more to what that is and how it's important for the listeners that are listening to it if they haven't been exposed to it? Sure. So I'll give you a short, easy explanation of neuro-linguistic programming. Just break up the words. Neuro stands for your neurology, that is your brain and your nervous system. Linguistic comes from the word language, and this is the language that we speak to ourselves verbally as well as non-verbally. And programming comes from the computer analogy of programming. So neuro-linguistic programming, we actually use language to program your neurology. That's a quick definition of it. And the simplest of terms, it's a manual to run your brain. I mean, anything that you want to achieve using the power of your own mind, using the power of your own mindset, NLP can help you achieve it and really fast. And I really love that definition. I really do. I, I'm, I'm going to replay that and listen to it again because I think that's the, one of the most positive definitions I've ever heard, actually. We've seen the NLP come and go in trends and mm -hmm. we've seen it, unfortunately, being used in a bit more of a manipulative way. And I've actually known people to say, oh, you know, NLP is very taboo, I think, sort of in the early mm -hmm. 2000s. Uh, but when you think about it, well, anything can be used in a positive or negative way. So it really depends on how you're using it. And I really like the idea that you touched on there, that it works on a, uh, on a subconscious level as well as a conscious level. With our words that we use are so important with what comes out of our mouth as well as what's that inner dialogue. So you're saying that we can actually use NLP for our inner dialogue. Is that correct? Yes, of course. Of course, a dialogue with yourself, a dialogue with others. For example, let's say that you want a, to attract a million dollars and you keep telling people, I want to attract a million dollars. And at the back of your mind, you've got this little tiny voice telling you, oh, that's not going to happen. That's conversation. That's a dialogue happening inside mm. your head. And that's going to prevent that from happening. Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I'm going to ask you a little bit, but, but okay, then how can we, how can we prevent that? Is there just a very quick giveaway that you could do right now, putting you on the spot, spot of course, uh, for those that are listening to, is there something that they can implement right now to help them to stop that? Okay, the best way definitely would be to go to an NLP practitioner and have them get rid of that from your brain. But if you want to do something by yourself to get rid of that, is to every time you have that thought, you always have a picture associated with it. There's either a picture or a movie that plays in your mind when you have that thought. And it's at a very subconscious level. But if you focus a little bit on the thought, you'll be able to see the picture. Mm. Just read that picture. You're the architect of your own movie. Mm. And if you can see a picture, you can always see a different picture. So create a picture in your mind of you attracting those million dollars. And every time there's that thought at the back of your mind, oh, well, it's not gonna happen. Find that picture and replace it with a picture of you actually attracting that. And that should help. Oh my gosh, that is so powerful. And I think a lot more movies. So I'm gonna be playing those movies a whole lot more to myself, definitely. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> <laughs> we also touched on that you are accredited and I didn't even realize that you had to be accredited. I know it was licensed with the Belbin team roles uh, model, but I didn't realize it's an accreditation, which is lovely. And I love Belbin for team. I mean, there's so many different models for different types of leadership. Uh, but I know that Belbin, like, I, when I came across Belbin, quite a few years ago, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so good for team. So do you want to explain that a little bit to the, the listeners? I know that it's quite complex with its um, 
uh, characteristics, but uh, I'm, right. I reckon that you'd be very good at uh, explaining it, seeing that you did a great job with the NLP. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I won't go into all the characteristics of Belbin team roles, but I will say that there are nine different characteristics. Belbin team roles is all about what is the role that you play in the team? There is an eligibility and there is a suitability for a particular task. The eligibility comes from your experience, your education, and your skills. But your suitability comes from the role you play. Are you a leader? Are you a team worker? Are you someone who gets ideas and converts them into action? Are you someone who want, you know, actually... Uh, evaluates a situation, finds the pros and cons. And these are subtle roles in the team that need to be played in order for the task to be completed on time and be successful. Mm -hmm. And these are roles that nobody looks at. And at Belvin, we actually do that with Belvin team roles. We not only look at uh, who's fit where, we also check if there are any gaps in the team and who can fill those gaps. Mm -hmm. Mm, beautiful. It actually creates a wonderful, wonderful synergy in the team when you apply it. Yes, definitely. Because everyone has their different uh, type of natural aptitude as well as the, the skill set that they learned. And leadership really is, it comes in all do different sorts of forms and how you uh, perform it or execute it, I should say. But um, I know I'm on the plant. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Are you? Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so listeners you're just going to have to google that a little bit more or reach out to to sarisha oh my gosh i did practice it though <laughs> okay so your topic though uh which uh we both would love you to talk about is about mm -hmm. three reasons why you aren't achieving goals so for listeners that um, I mean, everyone talks about goal setting and how to go about it, but there can be lots of different reasons why we perhaps don't achieve our goals. So, do you want to take that away for us? Sure. Yeah. So, like Sonia said, there are a lot of reasons why you don't achieve goals, and I will cover the three major reasons why most people who set a goal don't achieve it. We've all had times when we've set amazing New Year resolutions, right? Yeah. And, then, and then we don't do anything about it. And I think come February, March, we've forgotten all about our New Year resolutions. Mm -hmm. Now, goals are something that you can either have really large goals, you can have small goals, you can have achievable goals. A lot of people say set smart goals. It's all wonderful. But there are some major mistakes that people make while setting a goal. Number one mistake that people make while setting a goal is that they always set a goal in the future. Mm. And when they say it, the language they use is in the future. Mm. Now, let's say I want to lose weight and I want to lose 10 kgs. And I say, I will lose 10 kgs in a year or whatever, or I want to lose 10 kgs. What people don't realize is that your subconscious mind is like a five-year-old child. When you say, I want to lose weight or I will lose weight, your subconscious mind will keep pushing your goal into the future. Hmm you achieving that goal will keep getting postponed because in your mind, it's always going to be, I will, I will, eventually I will. So as you move forward in time, your goal moves forward along with it. Mm. Unless you set a goal in different words, in words that your subconscious mind actually understands and wants to make it happen, there's a very good chance that your goal will keep getting pushed ahead. Hmm. And that's the number one major mistake that people make. Now, do you want a solution for it? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, I look at it this way. What if you had a time machine and you could travel to the exact date that you want to achieve your goals? Sonia, I'm going to put you on the spot here for a second. <laughs> 
and ask him okay. to give us a goal. Give us a goal that I do want to lose the weight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. How much by when? Mm-hmm. Well, let's start with the 10 T's. <laughs> <laughs> by when? Well, considering it's August now, definitely by Christmas. By Christmas, so that's 25th of December. Yes. 10 K's. And a good way to do this is put yourself in a time machine okay. and travel down to 25th December mm-hmm. and sit there, look back, okay, and start your goal with a statement. It is now 25th December 2020 and I have lost 10 kgs. Nice. Yep. So in your mind, you are programming your subconscious mind with the statement that on 25th of December, 2020, you have already lost 10 kgs. Mm. Mm. So your mind is a goal seeking mechanism. I mean, your conscious mind sets the goal, but your subconscious mind goes and achieves that goal. The moment you work like this, You have already programmed your subconscious mind by yourself to achieve the goal on that specific date. Yes. Yes. I I can really, I, you know, when I I close my eyes and like I said, I, I do tend to play movies and I can do it even with my eyes open. So I really tried to feel it to actually see what it was Uh like and to almost like look down and go, Oh my gosh, I feel awesome. I've lost that weight. And I actually did feel that little bit more positive towards it. It was interesting, mm-hmm. very short, very quick. Uh, yeah. so I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to play with this a bit more because that felt good. <laughs> <laughs> it almost felt like yes. achievable. Yes. Mm. Rather I'm, than sure you will, Sonia. I'm going to talk to you on Christmas. Uh oh. <laughs> my <laughs> money where my mouth is. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely want to, definitely. Yeah. So that's okay. We can reach yeah. out and we can say have Merry Christmas to each other then, yes. <laughs> All right. So that, that brings me really to the second reason. Yeah. That brings me to the second reason that people don't achieve goals, and that is people set goals and they forget about it. Yes. It, it's written down, it's on a piece of paper. Maybe it's, you know, written down somewhere else as well. And then it's forgotten. People don't think of their goals, don't look at it, or don't do anything actively towards it every single day. Mm. Remind mind is a five-year-old. You need to keep reminding it to do stuff. You, even though you've programmed it, you need to keep reminding it. Mm. And the reason people don't achieve it is because they've set the goal and then they do whatever it takes, but they don't know what they're working towards. They don't have a destination in sight all the time. It's like you're driving a car and you know where you want to go, but you're not checking your GPS. You're not checking if the turn that you take is actually taking you towards your destination or not. If you actually don't take you towards your goal, then the chances of you achieving that goal are less Mm. Well, certainly in the, the st- uh, covering off on that first one, if for me to lose mm-hmm. the weight that I want to lose, I, I know that I can, because I'm just work, 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 work and head down and, and I'll forget. And then at the end of the day, I go, oh, I still didn't go for that walk. Or I unconsciously reached for that biscuit to dunk in my cup of tea. Or uh-huh. I didn't eat and then I'm so hungry, I just want to just stuff my face silly (laughs) and those sorts of things so yes we we certainly can forget there's so many other things that can take us off track so then what would be the solution for that the solution for that is the movie that you created just now yeah every day when you wake up in the morning play the movie just before you're going to bed play that movie again Mm -hmm. another wonderful solution for it is to create a vision board. Write your goal down on the vision board in a nice little sentence, the way that I explained to you uh, just some time back, and gather pictures that represent it. Hmm. 
uh, quotes that represent it and create a vision board around it <clears throat> and see it every day. Mm. This keep reminding your mind about it. And the next time you want to take that biscuit and dunk it in, your mind is in there. Okay, so I've got to do a vision board here in, in the office, right there where I tend to at least look up before mm -hmm. I grab that biscuit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the same goes for businesses. You're running a business, you have a goal, create a vision board, create a vision board that has the kind of customers you want to attract, the kind of customers that will give you the revenue that you're looking for. Mm. A board, the kind of um, remuneration you are looking for mm. on your vision board. Mm. And have that goal in bold. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea because we've seen a lot of people have personal vision boards. And then some of us may have worked where there's been sales teams and they have it in a different type of a way where they're writing up those sales, uh, if, you know, they're, they're daily, they're, they're weekly, even if it's a half hour, a half day or, a, or an hourly and they'll put it up on a whiteboard. So really, and I do know that when I have worked close to those sales teams and just constantly walking past that, whiteboard that it's always there in the mind maybe it would be i mean obviously not maybe that it would be really good for us to do it or for the rest of us that don't necessarily work in those areas but you know somehow put it into a picture or a or a words and that have it close by do you think that well i suppose everyone's different what would have more impact than a picture or words that you said it right everyone's different for me words don't work um it's pictures but i'm sure that um there are people out there for whom words work quotes are very inspiring so for them quotes definitely um there are people who even put their own picture on the vision board there are some people who put a mirror in the middle of the vision board and that uh symbolizes for them that they are achieving everything around it so mm -hmm really depends on how your mind works and the most beautiful thing about your mind is every single person's mind is unique and there aren't really rules about it i actually have a youtube video that i've made on vision board so if you can just go to youtube search for citrines in that's my um, youtube channel and look for the vision board video you will find that one of the things i say is there are no rules for creating a vision board mm. go away Mm. love it love it love it i know that it was a bit of a again everything comes and goes and trends and and maybe some of the listeners might have heard me say it once before but and i know that <clears throat> i've seen it come and go with the vision boards and i've when i it started to re-emerge again here in australia um approximately a year year and a half ago i sort of thought oh you know phooey <laughs> And uh, one of my friends was doing a class on it and she said, look, Sonia, can you just come along and give me a bit of critiquing on my presentation skills and things like that? So I had to participate and I felt silly and I'm going, oh my gosh, this is just, you know, so 80s or, you know, 2000-ish, like I think it came back then and I feel like a kid and all this sort of thing. And, and I put it up, I brought it home and my kids and my husband's like, oh my gosh, this is so good, we need to do this. And they did it big times on each of the walls in our bedrooms. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I just work, work, work. You know? mm -hmm. And I remember walking past many months later and it was in my peripheral mm -hmm. vision. And I went, wait a minute, my mind sort of made me stop. I looked and there was a couple of things up on that wall that I hadn't got before that I had brought into fruition and I thought oh my gosh Sonia smack my wrist it does work don't foo foo things keep you've got to keep doing things and, and you know what I've gotten lazy again I haven't done it so you <laughs> you've smacked my fingers and, you've got me to do it. <laughs> and, and I know yes, from it experience does. it's it really it does, does work so I hope that the listeners listening, that that has inspired you a little bit mm -hmm. and to give it a go. Don't foo-foo it. <laughs> <laughs> and you right. have a third tip for us? 
I do, I do. <clears throat> My third tip is learn to walk before you run. The third mistake, the third biggest mistake that a lot of us make while setting goals is we try to set these massive goals, I mean huge goals, before being able to achieve the small ones. You need a pattern, you need to train your mind to start achieving goals. If you've been setting goals all your life and achieving them, then yes, please go ahead and set yourself a large gigantic goal because you will go and achieve it. But for those of you who haven't been achieving goals every single time, right from the time you started your business or right from college or school, it makes more sense to learn to you know, crawl first, then walk, and then start running. So set small, achievable, bite-sized goals, even goals that could be achieved in a week's time, in a month's time. And these are bite-sized goals that are very easily achievable because you need to train yourself to achieve goals. Mm. A lot of people say set smart goals, have a vision board, think big. I say think big as well. When entrepreneurs come to me for business consulting and for coaching, I help them push their limits. I do help them set large goals. I do tell them, that you need to go beyond what you think is comfortable. But at the same time, I also tell them that you need to set bite-sized goals that you can achieve, work at it, achieve it, build up your confidence, build up your subconscious mind's confidence on you that you can actually achieve it so that it will put in the work and help you achieve your huge goals. Mm -hmm. Well, words from the wise there, absolutely. Um, when you first started talking about it, though, that's so me. Uh, my mum would be laughing and cracking up and saying, are you listening to this, Sonia? Uh, I was, even as a baby, I would just get up and run. And uh, because I could see everyone else doing it, apparently, you know, but, uh, you know, not just walk, but run, uh, not really walk. And it was actually difficult for me even growing up because I think that's sort of really the way I am. And learning to take a back step on that and do some small goals. I, I even distinctly remember having to do that again because it was such a bad habit of mine um, into my teenage years when I was getting into lots of trouble of not achieving my assignments. <laughs> for school because I would take on too much. Um, and it is certainly something we teach, but are we always keeping ourselves accountable and putting it into practice? Um, and I, I think I do <laughs> these days a bit more, but I think that it's, it's really good idea to, yeah, to, to put it into practice and to one, keep yourself accountable, but also to to realize that there's a lot of power in those small ones and achieving those small ones. There's a lot of people that think mm -hmm. the big ones that are important, yes. not always. What would your take no, be no, on no. that with the small they ones? Are. Sorry, what would yeah. be your what would be your take on achieving small goals? I think that small goals are extremely important because it is the small goals that make up the big ones. Mm. You know, it's little bits of water that make up an ocean. Mm. And it's also important to have big goals. It's important to have those long-term huge goals that are you know, a little scary, that make you a little nervous, but also challenge you and motivate you to put in the hard work and the smart work to achieve it. But at the same time, the small goals are the ones that make the difference. Um, let's say you want to double your business in two years. Mm -hmm. You're not going to double your business in two years unless you double your business this month. Unless you grow at a steady pace, little by little by little. And it's these little things that will make up that big goal. And um, I've have, I have this client who is amazing. He inspires me the way he sets goals and achieves them. And I think he's been doing it since uh, the moment he started working. And he is one person whom I would never say set small goals and achieve them because 
he's been doing it you know throughout his career when he left his job and started he does real estate investment and every time i see him he loves to you know tell me okay sirisha this is my next goal and and it's always bigger than the last one and for for him he's come a journey he's actually traveled that setting small goals achieving them making them a little bigger than a little bigger than a little bigger and now they're huge and it astonishes everyone the way he achieves them so to all the listeners yes you will get there you will definitely get there but it's a journey take it step by step mm, love that love that it is um it it feels fabulous to achieve goals and look sometimes for certain things that happen in life we're not always going to be able to achieve the goals what mm. would be your tips then for people to try to retweak or reestablish those goals i would say have a big goal decide on it and then work backwards work backwards and find out what are the little steps that you can take right now and it can be as small as deciding on that first project that you would do to eventually achieve that big goal and set that small project as a goal often times what happens is people in the excitement to achieve these large goals forget that even the small things they do on an everyday basis are goal worthy are actually something that will take them towards that big step and they forget to set them as goals anyway achieving these things are part and parcel of your everyday life how about you set them as a goal and then achieve it and while doing what you normally do you are also training your subconscious mind to start achieving goals and start realizing your capability of achieving goals and that will help you going ahead to make these goals bigger and bigger mm, that's really good and it's really quite powerful um with what you're saying there really uh no matter what that goal is i mean what one person would look at that and think it's a small goal another person would think maybe that's a really large goal so i suppose there is the perception okay. thing there um right with uh when it comes to say someone achieving that do you recommend that they should reward themselves oh definitely oh definitely But one of the extra chocolate like i've done <laughs> go on i didn't mean to cut you off there <laughs> that's quite all right so one of the things that um i wanted to do was to speak at an international level and the best you recently was the time i achieved that goal i set this goal last year in january and i achieved it this year uh through the best you and Fabulous. i'm celebrating it i'm getting myself a cake i'm making myself pizza uh since of course it's quarantine i have gone out and had pizza yeah. but yes i'm i'm celebrating it and it's important to celebrate the big wins but it's also important to celebrate the little wins get yourself something eat that ice cream you've been wanting to eat <laughs> or have something nice do something fun yeah nice sounds good sounds thank you good. for bringing that up sonia <laughs> that's all right i i often uh, i i like to cuz i never used to growing up to never used to because i'm just going to keep going keep going and i'm like mm -hmm. as i've gotten older actually it's really important to do that and i forget to do it i think really for myself but when i've had to be accountable and and to help a team to grow i i would be a whole lot better with that and to to help them to grow and i knew that the importance of it and then to really take again <laughs> a little bit of my own medicine say actually i should be doing it myself but just maybe not so many calories like the chocolate or the alcohol but <laughs> could find a a low calorie way to get that first goal back in <laughs> I have um, really enjoyed talking I'm a foodie. Are you you're a foodie with me? Yeah. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you could appreciate. <laughs> I've really enjoyed talking about goals with you because goals are really really important and uh for businesses and certainly to grow and for us as human beings to 
to to leverage ourselves and each other and to move into a positive direction uh, and mm -hmm. some people, unfortunately, I don't know, but with how I should say that, but it's like they don't realize the impact of goals or whether they look at it as being a bit basic. What would be your advice to them if they see that that way? Mm -hmm. I think the word goal has been used and overused and misused to an extent that it is natural for some people to look at it as a basic thing, um, you know, because so many people talk about goal setting, so many different ways of goal setting. Um, but ultimately, I'll just tell you this. Let's say that you want to go on a vacation. You've chosen this wonderful hill station, a beautiful spot. And, you know, you've decided where you want to go. And you get into your car. You turn on your GPS and you drive there, you know that you're going to reach that hill station and you are going to enjoy yourself. Guess what? You've set a goal. You've set a goal of where you want to go. So if you decide on something and you end up reaching there, you have been setting goals, you have been achieving them. And let's say that you just want to go out somewhere, you get into your car and you drive around aimlessly, are you going to have fun or are you going to be, you know, wondering at the end of the day, what did I do? I wasted my time. And that's what happens when you don't set a goal. So mm. however basic goal setting may seem, it is part and parcel of living, of whether it is on a vacation, whether it is work, whether it is your personal life, a relationship, a health goal. Goals are the basic, most important things that you need to do. Otherwise, you would be living an aimless life. Mm. Oh, again, you, you explained that so beautifully. <laughs> really, <laughs> thank you for that. I have actually experienced, believe it or not, two people. One, one person said to me a long time ago, she never experienced setting goals. So I didn't know how to experience goals. And that was like, what for me? And another person said, oh, I don't like to set goals. I'm like, how could you? achieve things if you so she said I'm not going to to me it doesn't have to be a, a set or structured or a big thing but it could be so much um, so I think that the way that you explained it was really really lovely so tell me then uh, Sarishi uh, what is on the horizon for you for the remainder of 2020 a wonderful, exciting things that are on the horizon for me for 2020. <laughs> I've taken my whole business online. Um, I've been just restricted to India because of geography. And now with the entire world opened up because of the pandemic and the internet, I um, am consulting. I've, I've decided to go worldwide and I've decided to start having workshops and masterclasses at different time zones so that I can reach a larger audience and help a lot more people than just the limited Indian audience. Mm -hmm. There is a workshop coming up. It's called Extreme Persuasion. Um, there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one consulting assignments coming up. Exciting year ahead. Very exciting, isn't it, really? There's always you know, with a lot of the different major changes, there's always pros and cons involved and the, certainly the silver linings. And I think it has mm -hmm. been lovely that the world has opened up a whole lot more and that we do have such fantastic tools like the internet. Thank goodness. Um, so that's really exciting to hear that news for you that uh, the remainder of this year and into next year. So it'll be interesting to see how that all goes for you when we touch base in on the 25th of uh, uh, December this year. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so then tell me, is there an offer you would like to provide the listeners? Yes, yes. I have a very special PDF for all of you. It is how to properly set smart goals. It's got some of the concepts I talked about and a lot more, especially on setting smart goals, not just the regular smart but also the NLP way of setting smart goals. Mm -hmm. And this is available at the link. Yep. So you guys can download it. 
yep, I'll have it there on the page. That's really lovely. I love the whole slant on it with um, the NLP way. So I think that's very important when we're working on ourselves on a professional level and a personal level. And this is what my show's all about is all the different facets of life and our personal, professional and to prosper and all of that. So I think that to have that um, tool that you're providing us and to have that extra embedded strengthening tool of the NLP will be so fantastic. So I will definitely be um, downloading that too. So thank you very much. <laughs> so before we do a quick <laughs> sign off, is there any last minute things you might want to say to the listeners? Yes, um, about the current situation, especially business owners that are wondering what's the new normal going to be like? Are things going to get back to the way they used to be? And the listeners who are waiting for things to get back to the way they used to be, it's never going back to the way it used to be. Things have changed. And what we are experiencing now is a nat natural progression of the way the world has been going technologically, um, which would have taken a couple of years maybe to happen, but it's happened quicker because of the pandemic. And it, the, the faster we get used to this kind of a situation, the faster we come up with different ways, different solutions that we can offer our customers, our clients, the better, because this is the new normal. And it's time to get used to it. And it's time to grow using the new normal. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And to get assistance from people like you. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, thank I you. would love to connect with each one of you. I mean, it, I just enjoy helping you grow. That's, that's so lovely. That's so lovely. And I think that there will be a lot more uh, collaborations, global collaborations happening because of all of this. Um, so yeah, I, I think that your um, skill set and abilities will certainly help a lot of people in their uh, in their different types of joint ventures or, or ventures, and with their um, businesses. So thank you um, for that warm invitation. <laughs> And thank you very much for joining us again. So we will say see you later then. Definitely, Sonia. It was wonderful speaking with you and uh, wonderful sharing whatever little I know with all the audience. That's lovely. Thank you very, very much. And I will then see you next in December. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> thank you. See you Bye -bye. then. Bye-bye.